chair of committees for Thank Calgary you. Curry. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And at the risk of sounding a little self-servant given my election as the deputy chair of committees, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your election as deputy speaker of the house. Sure. Now, having given uh, this opportunity to speak some thought, I think it is best for me to start right at home uh, with my family. I would like to start with thanking my wife. She gave me the go ahead to start door knocking more than a year ago uh, in order to win the nomination for the United Conservative Party. I don't think either of us at the time knew what we were getting ourselves into. And uh, so thank you, Christine. Your sacrifices mirror my own. To my son, Eric, you don't understand all of daddy's words yet. For those of you who don't know, he's only two years old. Uh, but I hope one day that you will understand that everything I do, the late nights, all the travel away from home, the time that I spend away from you, I do it for you to ensure that you have the opportunities in the future that I had when I was growing up in Alberta. To my mother and father, Jane and Don, or Dr. and Dr. Milliken, your love and support throughout the years did not go unnoticed. In a weird way, I actually owe my life to politics. It was actually an unsuccessful uh, attempt at an election in 1979 that didn't quite work out, that then allowed my parents to decide to have another child, and that child was actually me. To my brothers and my sister, I am still the kid who looks up to all of you, to the volunteers who helped me win, and are the reason why I am here, I am forever in your debt. By way of some background on me, uh, I took economics and business at the University of Alberta, and then ultimately I became a lawyer. Uh, after several years of practicing, I ultimately ended up starting my own business. So with all due respect to parliamentary counsel and the many lawyers in this house, I do often refer to myself as a reformed lawyer. On the uh, business front, I've told many people throughout my door knocking that it's great to say that I managed to build up this business to do business across Canada, but really it's actually a darker story in the sense that in 2015 and 2016, the economy of Alberta was turned in a way that I didn't agree with and ultimately is out of necessity that I had to, that I had to ultimately start looking for clients in other provinces and other countries in order to diversify my company away from Alberta. It meant long days of work, long business trips, time away from my family, given the economic mismanagement of our province over the last four years. As such, I'm, I am honoured to be part of the United Conservative Party and the United Conservative Government, one that is actively supporting job creators, entrepreneurs and risk takers. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. I will be the first to admit it, uh, I was not asked to run by anyone for this office. A year and a half ago I was working hard, minding my own business, both figuratively and literally, so I guess there's a pun in there, and I was working obviously to help provide for my family. I was also fed up with how the province was being run. We need a government that supports the economy, responsible growth of our energy sector, which in turn helps support prosperity not only in Alberta, but across all of Canada. Long story short, a year and a half ago, I disagreed with the direction of Alberta, so I decided to change it. I ran in Calgary Curry because I live in Calgary Curry. I'm raising a family in Calgary Curry. I even started my company in a small extra bedroom that we had in a home in Calgary Curry. And years ago, before I decided to run, I actually found fulfillment uh, through volunteering and fundraising within my community. Once my company was sort of up and running, I had a little bit more extra time on my hands, and I filled that time within the community. And remember, getting to this point was not an easy task. It took, it took many weeks of 100 hour plus work weeks, uh, trying to build my company out of nothing with absolutely no guarantee of a paycheck. I can't say enough about the risks taken by small business owners and they need our support. At the time though, I was volunteering for my community association, providing a little extra hand here and there, labor wherever I could, moving guitars and helping store donated keyboards, things of that nature, flipping burgers at different events, and I even helped fundraise for a 10-seater bus uh, to help drive local new immigrant children to various sporting programs and after-school programs. 
If I can say one thing with the platform that I have here, it's that if you have an extra hour, even, even just one hour, if you decide to dedicate that time to a local charity in your area, the marginal benefit of that one hour can be immeasurable. Take care of your community, and your community will take care of you. Calgary Curry is an amazing riding. Madam Speaker, to borrow some words from Mr. Speaker, he often talks about his riding being fantastic, and I would arguably say that my, ride, that my riding, the riding of Calgary Curry, could be considered the best riding. I've heard many stories from the MLAs here about, well, some people have said their riding is as big as Belgium. Well, my riding's a little different. On a good day, if I don't hit a light, I can probably drive across it in less than 10 minutes. Uh, 24% of Calgary Curry's population are visible minorities, and that includes my wife and my son. It's a young riding with about 40% of the population being between 25 and 44 at 39. I'm in that category. It's an urban riding with bike lanes, senior living centers, uh, great restaurants, and even a golf course. But it has problems too. Along with some of the highest rated schools, it actually has some of the lowest rated schools. Along with some of Alberta's most expensive homes, it also has several community housing projects. We have certain pockets of community members that have been in the area for generations, and we have pockets of new Canadians, new immigrants and refugees from various war-torn countries. The challenges facing Calgary Curry are real. All you need to do is go to the Westbrook Mall C train station early in the morning, and you will see mass homelessness, you will, you will get a glimpse into the opioid crisis. Door knock the community's housing projects and you will find many people struggling to feed and clothe their children without computers or TVs or phones. Then you can door knock some of the more affluent areas and you'll find what you think are people on the surface who are enjoying great successes, but if you dig a little deeper, you'll find that some of these individuals have been out of work for upwards of three years. They're hanging on for dear life just to keep their homes. And then if you go around, others are just gone, forced to sell and move recently to other provinces or countries in search of work. Uh, just as one example, uh, I was in Rutland, door knocking in Rutland Park, uh, which is a relatively new area within my community. Uh, and I, I, I ran into a lady by the name of Sarah, and she had two young kids about the same age as Eric. So immediately we started talking about kids, and uh, the ice was broken. And then she, she quickly mentioned that her husband uh, was in Houston. And at the time, my wife was actually in Houston attending an energy conference, so I just assumed that the conversation was going to go down that path. So I started to talk along the lines of Houston and conventions, and she said, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 that's not it, Nick. In this case, her husband had lost his job 10 months before and was not able to find work in Canada and ultimately had to move to Houston. Now, the, the, the big problem with this is that it's essentially that the family was forced to split and live in completely different countries. And once they were financially back on their feet, then she had the full expectation that she was going to move the whole family to Houston. And this is just one of the stories of hardship that I've heard over the last four years of a failed government, a government that failed to support our workers and failed to support the economy. The saddest part of this is that once these people leave, they almost never come back. We have experienced a prov province-wide brain drain over the last four years, but it has to stop now. We will support the free market, support our energy industry, bring back jobs to Alberta and help create the prosperity which in turn allows us to care for marginalized portions of our population and protect the individual regardless of faith, lifestyle or background. There you go. I grew up in Alberta knowing that the opportunities would be there for me regardless of what I did with my life. I could be a drummer, Lord knows I tried, uh, an artist, a plumber, an accountant. In my ultimate case, I became a lawyer and then a, an entrepreneur, and I guess now you could probably call me a politician. Uh, and this is my chance to help restore those opportunities so my son can have opportunities for success right here in our great province. Okay, so this is now also the time of the speech that we can all just sit back, stop for a second, take a deep breath, and take all of this in. 
all of us here today who were elected on both sides. We are now part of Alberta's history, and that statement is almost overwhelming to me. The responsibility and weight on all of us is enormous, and we have some big shoes to fill. For me, I remember Christmas in Red Deer. I remember family trips to Gull Lake. And I remember hearing stories about my great-grandfather, William R. Housen, who was an MLA here from 1930 to 1936. He was the opposition leader against Premier Eberhardt. He was also the leader of the Alberta Liberal Party, but I don't hold that against him. At the time, though, as a child, I could only imagine what it was like to sit in this chamber. I remember thinking, man, my grandpa must have been, my great-grandpa must have been really old. But now here I am, and it's my turn. It's our turn. I walk around these marble halls, sit in the chamber, sometimes even on the speaker's throne, and I realize that we are all blessed to be here with the opportunity to help restore Alberta as the engine and Canada's economic leader and a leader in the world. No matter your political stripes, we are here to support Alberta, support Albertans, support our families, and in many ways, support each other. Together, we can make Alberta the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you.